want to know your thoughts on the way the United States government talks about China as a, a threat, a uh, looming threat. And it's interesting, you never hear the United States uh, suggest competing against China with high speed railroad railroads. It's always with um, through militaristic actions. So what are your thoughts on that relationship? Well, obviously, this anti-China psychosis is very useful to the U.S. ruling elite because, for example, it tends to bind the two parties together. There's not that much daylight between the Democrats and Republicans when it comes to this anti-China hysteria. That's helped to undergird the so-called CHIPS Act, which Mr. Biden has signed into law, because it's there's a fear that if China seizes its rebel province, Taiwan, Taiwan includes the corporation, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturer, which is one of the most profitable corporations on planet Earth and has a stranglehold, along with Samsung of South Korea, over the chips industry, that it could be game over for U.S. imperialism. And so the idea, as evidenced by Mr. Biden's visit to Ohio just a few days ago, to try to build up the chip manufacturing in the United States. And the Republicans signed, at least some Republicans signed on to it. Uh, certain Democrats signed on to it too. And you may have noticed that I think a turning point, uh, speaking historically, in terms of the downturn in relations between Beijing and Washington came just last month when Speaker Nancy Pelosi rather adventuristically decided to visit Taiwan, uh, followed by Senator Ed Markey, another Democrat, from Massachusetts. He's supposed to be progressive. Right. Followed then by Senator Marsha Blackburn, a Republican. So uh, this is a very dangerous turn of events. And uh, actually, I was giving a lecture on this uh, just a few days ago. And one of the points that I mentioned, which I think should be chilling to us all, is that uh, we should not find it accidental or coincidental that thus far the only use of atomic weapons on planet Earth took place in August 1945 against that previous challenger to U.S. hegemony, speaking of Imperial Japan, one of the most profound episodes in racist murder in human history, which is saying something. And we should keep that forever in mind when we talk about U.S. relations with China, not least because there have been about 19 tabletop exercises involving war games between uh, U.S. Uh, war planners in Washington uh, gaming out a war against China, and the United States has lost all 19 tabletop exercises. So it's not as if uh, this is going to be like the old West, where the cowboy gets the drop on the bad guys. I'm afraid to say that China might be able to turn the tables, leading to the incineration of all of us. Let us hope not. We have a, a comment from Brian who says, Bernie Sanders rightly pointed out that the CHIPS Act was a massive corporate welfare bill. Well, Bernie Sanders is correct. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it's really something, is it not, that at a time when Los Angeles has tens of thousands of homeless people, where hunger continues to stalk the land, and many in Congress says, well, there's no money to do anything about these domestic problems. And yet, uh, billions can be found to dole out to these uh, blood-sucking corporations. Uh, billions can be found for war in Central Europe. Although, to be fair, uh, these billions supposedly going to war in Ukraine, a lot of it's going to the US military industrial complex. And the United States is banking on the point that three years from now, that those weapons can then be shipped and the war will be uh, continuing. Uh, not to mention the fact that, well, when oftentimes when the weapons uh, hit the ground in Ukraine, they're destroyed by Russian forces, or there's some sort of, uh, as they say in the United States, some of the weapons fall off a truck and yeah. fall, fall into the hands of the black marketeers who then perhaps sell them across the border into Russia itself. It, it's obviously scandalous. Right. And when CBS made a documentary showing that and showing that an estimated 70 percent of the weapons were not winding up in the hands that they were intended to wind up in, they had to remove that documentary. It was called Arming I, Ukraine. I recall that very well. 
in fact, uh, another example of the operation of the First Amendment and free speech right. in the United States of America, which this Carnegie Mellon professor should could tell us about uh, in many chapters and verses.